what is a uh, magnetic anisotropy so magnetic anisotropy is uh, when a uh, magnet energy depends on the direction of mag magnetization with respect to crystal axis o shape we are only going to talk uh, today about uh, crystal axis so when the uh, magnetic energy um, is uh, higher when magnetization is aligned along one particular crystal axis we can call it an easy axis and when you rotate uh, the magnetization to another axis uh, the energy of the magnet increases and we can call it a hard axis so this is uh, an isotropy which um, can make some crystal axis easy and other ones hard um, and uh, we will look um, how it does and some of these can be seen uh, here for um, an iron uh, crystallized in a BCC structure, border, body centered cubic crystal structure. So, in this one, uh, when uh, the magnetization M is aligned uh, along uh, 100 crystallographic direction, which is along the um, edge of the um, this uh, crystal it is much easier to saturate the magnetization which you can see with the dark black color in the graph where y-axis represents the magnetization and x-axis uh, and x-axis is the field so when you increase the field um, magnetization saturates much faster along 100 direction however when you apply a field along uh, one one zero direction the magnetization uh, takes much longer you need to apply much higher field to saturate it and when uh, you go uh, and apply field along one 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 direction the magnetization uh, even takes uh, uh, further um, field to saturate it which is shown as a light gray color so in this way you can say that there are axes easy medium and hard axis so you can really differentiate between easy and hard axis so material uh, um, gets saturated uh, below its tc and you apply field uh, much easily um, along the easy axis and um, compared to the hard axis so this is uh, what we meant by magnetic anisotropy so there is some sort of anisotropy which um, makes one crystal axis different from the other one in terms of um, ease to magnetize it. Another example can be seen for cobalt which uh, crystallize in the uh, hexagonal cubic um, close back structure is CP. So in this one um, high symmetry axis for hexagonal close back structures uh, usually um, is along, uh, represented along the c-axis uh, z-direction so um, if you look to the magnetization the magnetization saturates much easily along the c-direction and within the uh, ab plane the magnetization takes much more um, field to get saturated so meaning that along the c-direction it uh, saturates much, much easily, it's an easy direction and within the plane perpendicular to the axis is the hard uh, direction. Now if we uh, look at an example of uh, such a material uh, in terms of drawing uh, the energy of the magnet with respect to different crystallographic direction, this you can see in this picture. Uh, so here uh, the easy direction or uh, the C axis is along the Z direction and um, uh, the um, hard axis is within the XY plane. So you can see that the energy is uh, it's, it's uh, shown in the color plot. So energy is uh, uh, really minimum or small when it's uh, blue or dark blue and it increases towards the red so if you look you can see that the center of this graph along the z axis is uh, uh, blue so that that is where the energy is minimum and magnetization really like to align along this direction and now if you take any point in the xy plane where you can rotate the magnetization 
it's always uh, red so it's high in energy so compared to the z direction all other points are high in energy so it is an example where the x axis is um, so where the um, easy axis is along z direction and the hard axis is um, um, perpendicular to it within the plane in contrast to this situation there can also be materials where uh, magnetization really would like to stay uh, either along x direction or y direction but not along z direction so such a situation is shown uh, in this uh, 3d color plot so you can see that red color where the energy is increasing so if you rotate the magnetization uh, fully along z axis the energy becomes really high so magnetization uh, for magnetization it is a hard axis uh, and when you go uh, at an angle between uh, from z to z x plane or z y plane the energy starts to decrease and if you align um, any angle within the x y plane the energy is minimum so uh, such a situation can also exist so it shows that crystallographically this um, material has uh, another magnetic anisotropy which uh, makes um, z axis and is uh, a hard direction and x y direction x y plane any direction within the x y plane as an easy um, direction for the magnetization now if you compare uh, these two situations which we just discussed so uh, in situation a uh, the crystal has easy direction along z axis and in situation b the easy direction lies within the x y plane so there must be some parameter or some uh, property which um, um, makes a uh, situation a or situation b for uh, some crystals and this is um, called magnetic anisotropy and this is the reason why some crystals have um, a certain crystal direction easy compared to the other crystals um, in other directions so overall actually uh, magnetic anisotropy uh, it is crucial for materials uh, to be used as soft and hard magnets um, if you want to use it for data storage and processing uh, you want to use the ability of having soft and hard axes to increase the aerial density for recording and uh, for some other uh, magnetic uh, properties so uh, magnetic anisotropy serves uh, an important role uh, in uh, all these applications. There are several types of magnetic anisotropy. The one we are uh, going to talk uh, today is uh, magnetocrystalline anisotropy. There, are, there is also shape anisotropy, but um, the one we will talk is uh, magnetocrystalline, sometimes abbreviated as MCA, and uh, this uh, is. Uh, intrinsic uh, to the magnetic material and comes from the crystal structure. The origin of this uh, anisotropy lies uh, uh, in the spin orbit coupling, which is uh, a relativistic uh, interaction. The uh, role of uh, magnetic, uh, the role of spin orbit coupling in explaining the magnetic anisotropy was first uh, recognized by uh, Bloch and uh, Gentil in 1931. If you talk now about uh, a magnetic atom, so uh, the, um, from the electron from the magnetic atom you will have orbital angular momentum L and spin angular momentum um, S and uh, this relativistic interaction which is known as spin orbit interaction will actually give rise to an effective electron angular momentum which we know as uh, G total angular momentum so now if we take an electron uh, which uh, is orbiting um, and then we can define its orbital angular momentum L and a spin angular momentum S. Uh, so here in your, the picture on your left side uh, we have 
uh, I have selected uh, a Cartesian coordinate uh, frame x, y, z where the frame uh, is attached to the nucleus but uh, you can easily think of uh, switch the, uh, this frame and uh, attach it to the uh, electron so in this way you can think that the nucleus is moving around the electron and this movement will uh, is um, thought as uh, a current loop and giving rise to a magnetic field. This magnetic field will couple to electrons on spin. And uh, this coupling uh, can be thought of as the spin is in a vector potential, uh, meaning that uh, the spin uh, is now um, um, has a relativistic interaction which can be defined here uh, which controls the direction of spin. So this relativistic interaction spin-orbit coupling uh, prefers a certain orientation of spin with respect to the uh, orbit. Now if we look to this equation we can see that the spin which is denoted here by S uh, due to the spin orbit coupling prefers the spin to be aligned perpendicular to both uh, the gradient of the vector potential as well as uh, the orbital motion. Now this means that uh, the spin um, uh, prefers a spin here we are talking about one electron but uh, in a solid you will have uh, several elect uh, electrons and um, uh, a net uh, magnetization. So this means that the magnetization or the spin is actually uh, not free to move in a crystal in any direction. If it has strong spin orbit coupling, um, it will prefer to be in a certain direction which will be called as easy axis uh, compared to the other direction. Now uh, if we look uh, to the magnitude of spin orbit coupling, how it uh, usually expected to scale uh, in terms of different materials. So um, uh, the spin orbit coupling constant actually is proportional to z power 4, which means that uh, we expect to have spin orbit coupling playing a stronger role in heavier elements as you go down in the periodic table. And particular, particularly for um, those electrons uh, which are inner shell, and uh, it, we expect uh, that it will be weaker for elements with uh, low atomic number. So in this way, we can actually already see or expect which elements can have strong spin orbit coupling. So in metals, example is a platinum. It's a heavy metal. It's expected to have strong spin orbit coupling, and there are also other. Uh, um, examples for this. So if I summarize uh, for the spin orbit coupling which is a relativistic interaction the electrostatic fields that are governed by symmetries of the crystal. Uh, they do influence the electron orbits and orbits are coupled to the crystal lattice so meaning that now the crystal structure will become important and uh, magnetization will prefer certain direction and orientation. So, okay, so far we looked actually that uh, magnetocrystalline has its origin on spin orbit coupling, but now the question is how uh, are we really going to calculate it? How we will know um, uh, what value it is going to have for a certain crystal structure or for a certain material?